Hello, my name's Louis and I deal with all the technical support for Velocity Software. In this video, I'm just going to give you a brief introduction on what Velocity can do for you. I'm just going to start off in the peer review section. So this is where all your products are held. As you can see, it's pretty self-explanatory. It gives most of what's inside the product file just here so you can see straight away. So things like the price, whether it's weighed or non-weighed, tax, things like that. At the top you've got your departments. So if I, at the moment, mains clicked, which is why you can see all these. This test department I've just made and if you click it, it will show what's in there, which is just this one test product. You'll notice that you've got a plus, these three buttons, you've got a plus edit and delete so add edit and delete and you'll see that throughout the software and it always means it means the same thing for example if you want to make a new department you just click the plus give it a name press ok and that's it so as you can see there's no products in there if you want to add a new product what you want to do is below where the products, the products are held click the plus and you can then create a product in here. Again, it's really self-explanatory, so um, let's just call it apples. Text area two is what's most commonly used for the ingredients and allergens. What Velocity can do is, if you double click in there, let's just write some allergens down. For example, say if you've got a long list of ingredients and some of them are allergens, which will need to be bolded by law. To save time, if you use this button here, that will highlight the allergens for you, saving yourself a lot of time. <clears throat> you can also change the size and things like that. At the top here, this is most commonly used for best before day for your labels and the way it works is you just put in say seven days which means it's going to put the date on seven days ahead so that will be your best before date and you could use that for like frozen date or something of that sort you choose whether it's weighed or non-weighed there choose the tax on it VAT no tax you can choose the group here in a moment I'll briefly show you how to set up a group and then you'll be able to choose in here you can also give it a specific barcode or have it generate a barcode. The price it goes here, cost and price. And then you'll end up with a finished product like this, for example, let's say, no, let's say sandwich. So that's just an example of how a finished product would look. £2.60 each because it's non weighed and this one has one day for the best before day you can obviously edit by double clicking or you can edit in bulk by clicking and dragging down left clicking that is and again clicking the edit button there for example um, let's say you wanted to make all the products highlighted non-weighed what you do is you tick the product type and click non-weighed and what you do is you press OK and it all become non weighed. And it's just the same for the others. So, for example, the tax rate, if you want to change it on all of them to 20% VAT, you choose it there, press OK. And as you can see, it's gone to 20% now. Now, that's pretty much the basics for the product side of things. Um, I'll move on to groups now. So groups just a bit further up here. You've got a long list of all the groups. Really straightforward. Again, just click the plus, give it a name, and press OK. And then going back to pill use, you can obviously just choose that group in their test group. So that's the basics for the products and the groups. What I'll go on to next is the retail sales. So what this is, is 
just normal retail transaction receipts. These will automatically import into Velocity and list here. If you highlight one, it will show what's on the receipt, prices, amount, things like that. If you need to, you can edit this. <clears throat> it's not very common, but and what you do is you just double click and change all the figures in there to your preference. Now, that's the retail side of things. So if you do wholesaling, we have an invoicing side of things in account sales. So I've only got one in here, but again, this will import automatically from the scale and this will be your invoice. So again, below you've got all the products that was in it. You can change things. Um, you can add, add things onto the invoice if you wish. Um, to properly edit the invoice, you'll highlight it, press invoice, edit invoice, and you can search here. just add that on there yeah. ah, and obviously choose the account first which it will be going on to and you can just add it there I'll move on to creating an invoice in a second because it's very similar to what we're doing here so this will have pulled in from the scale what you can do at this point is you can do things like email you can um, print it off, whatever you want, and you do all that by highlighting it and clicking invoice at the top, and you can email it there. So if I was to click this, what it would do is it would email to the account with the email that's been set in it, and I'll show you that in a second, creating accounts. If you want to view it, you can just click view, invoice, and in here you just have your invoice. Now this is completely editable and I can obviously set up a logo. All this data here will pull from the settings which I'll, I'll set up for you. And the customer details will go here. This one doesn't have it have it in here and I'll explain why in a second <clears throat> but that's how to view it now you can print it straight away by just clicking print invoice there so that's the invoice inside of things um, th this is for the account Joe blogs now the accounts is held here in accounts as you can see I've set up Joe blogs and you can edit it by double clicking. Notice the invoice address is blank on, on this account and that is why it was blank on the invoice. So if I was to um, type it in UK for example, then that would appear on the invoice. So We've also got, actually no, no, we've got, um, to create the invoice, what you do is you just click invoice at the top, create, and this is where you'll build the invoice. First thing you want to do is just choose the account, and you can put in uh, the invoice date, choose whether it's delivery or collection, and you can put the invoice uh, delivery date and time in there. To add products, just type anything, press this to search, and it will come up with the closest match. And then if you have other, th other products which are similar to Sandwich, then they'll be listed below. What you can do then is put in the amount, so say two sandwiches for £2.60, press the plus, that will add it on as a loan item and then you just press OK and one other thing as well say if the product is 
weighed, then what you do is you just put the weight in rather than the amount. So you press OK. And there's your invoice. And as I was saying, you can just view it straight away. Or you can print it. So that's the invoicing side of things. We've got a sales order. So this is very similar, except it's sales orders. And the idea is, is that as customers call in, again, same as invoicing the sales orders, create sales order. Say if a customer calls in, search and choose the account Joe Blogs. If it's someone new that's not on your account in Velocity, click the plus. You can add them in there, press OK, and that will add them as an account. But again, it's um, very similar to invoicing. So let's just choose a product. Um, let's say pairs. Just say we want four of them. Okay, it might ask you. Um, amount. Ah, you need to add an amount there as well. And press OK. And there's your sales order. Now, once you've got your sales order here, you can then convert it to an invoice if you wish. And you do that by clicking sales orders, convert to invoice. Are you sure? Yes. Do you want to include lines with zero amounts? I'm going to click yes. Do you want to delete? No. And no. That's going to now turn that into an invoice, as you can see there. So that's the sales order part of the side of things. M most users, they have more sales orders and invoices obviously and then when they're ready they'll just cherry pick them and turn them into invoices and then they can send them invoices to the customer by clicking invoice and email invoices so that's that's the sales order side of things now reports wise there's a lot of reports you can view and it's this button here, which is called Excel Reporting. So in here we've got a long list of reports. And let's go for this one, for example. They're all self-explanatory. Um, and you can filter it down quite a lot based on what you need. So this is saying wholesale accounts. You could say all accounts if you wanted, or retail accounts, so retail transactions. And you can put in dates, so let's just go back a month. Group by PLUs. I tend to go for PLUs by group because you can then see the group and then the PLUs, the products underneath. And let's just save it. Documents. Yeah. As you can see, it's got quite a lot of information in there, and this is just saying what's sold. So you can see like the weights, sales amount, profits, things like that. All these reports will give you a lot of inf interesting information. It's worth just having a play around with them and see what's best for you. We've also got what we call business analysis reporting. In here, from things like an account statement, account balances, things like that. Outstanding invoices as well. I'll just run one just so you can see how it looks. So I'm going to run an account statement on Joe Blogs for today. And there you go. So that's just a basic account statement. The amount at the bottom. Velocity can deal with accounting as well. 
this button here. This is where you can properly pay off invoices and things like that. So for example, Joe Bloggs has got a lot of invoices which he hasn't paid. Let's say he just wants to pay off this £5.20 invoice here. So you just highlight it. Pay invoices, pay. That will take it off his balance and pay the invoice. So that's how you do that. There's a lot of other things we can do, but I'll cover them in a more advanced depth video. The last thing I'd say is whilst using velocity, you want to ideally keep this on green. And that's because when you put it on red, when you're not using velocity, it will, it will automatically pull the transactions through and sometimes sometimes a box will pop up whilst that imports so you want to keep that on green only whilst using velocity when you're done put it back on red and it will continue to pull transactions through so that's the basics at the moment I'll, there'll be another video coming with more and more advanced side of things but for now that'll be the basics Thank you very much. Bye-bye.